Uh, so my name is Elspeth Minty. Uh, I am the global lead of the Java platform engineering team at Morgan Stanley. Uh, and I'm going to be talking today about uh, some work that we've been doing over the last few years to adopt an inner source approach for some of our existing proprietary Java libraries. Um, so we have a very large and very proprietary set of libraries that are the main Java platform for our Morgan Stanley. Um, these libraries have been um, in existence uh, in some form or another for something like 20 odd years. Um, they have had a lot of time and effort uh, put into uh, working on them and they're very stable, uh, but they are no longer strategic. Uh, we are in the process of working with our users uh, to migrate uh, onto an open source platform. But at the moment, and for the next few years, this um, proprietary set of libraries is going to be, remain our main Java platform. Um, so there's a challenge in how do we keep this code live and, uh, and, and quality, good quality while we are working with our users um, to move them onto a different platform. One of the things that we realized was that our users actually know a fair amount about our code base. Um, a lot of them have been working with it over a number of years uh, and are already making changes. Um, so moving to an inner source approach kind of made sense. We were kind of doing it without really realizing what we were doing. Um, one of the issues that we were seeing is that as we had less time to invest in maintaining the proprietary code, um, it became less predictable uh, when we would be able to deliver the changes that our users need. And by moving to an inner source approach, it meant that our users could make the changes themselves and they could prioritize it alongside their other work and make the changes in a time frame that made sense to, to them. Um, it also, we also wanted to encourage uh, a sense of ownership uh, of the code within our user community. Uh, this is not my team's code. This is Morgan Stanley code, and we should be treating it like that. Um, and we also wanted to test out the inner source model um, and see how it works. Uh, is this something that we could apply to some of the other code that we own, whether it's new or old? Um, so we've been doing this now for a little over two years. Um, so how did it go? Um, I would love to be able to say that we, uh, all we did was mark our repositories as public and then we just sat back and watched as all the contributions rolled in. Uh, it probably wouldn't have made a very interesting talk, uh, but it would have made our lives a lot easier. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Uh, we had to invest uh, a pretty significant amount of time up front um, to get the code ready and in a state where our users really could work with it. Um, it wasn't just our code that was old and proprietary, our build system was as well, and it hadn't really had any significant work done on it, on it for a number of years. Um, and we, we estimated it would probably take a couple of days for uh, someone to get uh, from um, a clean start to being able to really contribute code, commit code in, into our code base. Um, now, if this is a new joiner who's coming into the team and they're gonna be working with you for a few years, a couple of days isn't great, but it's not the end of the world. If this is someone who has other commitments, uh, who has a job um, that they are, uh, focused on, and this is a couple of lines of change um, that they need to make, um, a couple of days is the end of the world. They're just not going to do it. Um, so we invested a lot of time up front in making sure that um, our code, our build system was uh, renovated. It was very standard. It was very easy to use. Uh, and we're now at the stage where we just clone the repository. There's a few, still a few scripts that you have to run uh, and then, then you start building, but it's much, much quicker um, than what we had before. Um, it's a very big code base as well. It's, it's tens of thousands of, of lines uh, of Java code. Where do you get started with this? Um, you know, there had to be something that we could give people that outlined what the structure of the code was and just, you know, where, did, where do you actually get started? What do you need to look at? How is it structured? 
Um, contributors also needed to know whether the changes that they were making were good. Um, as in common with a lot of code of this age, um, it wasn't written with testability in mind. Um, and this is one of the biggest issues that we still have uh, with it, within assessing this code. Uh, we see a fair amount of transient failures in our test cases. Uh, and it's difficult for people to know whether that random test failure in a piece of code that they've never seen before is a transient issue or whether it's something that is an unexpected consequence of their change. And what this means is that my team still has to be involved. Uh, we can't just say uh, if, the if, the, if the tests are good, uh, you're okay, because it's fairly unusual to get a completely clean test run. Um, because this is a big code, code base, we have a large number of tests and it's not unusual for uh, a couple to out of the tens of thousands of tests we want to be failing. Um, we also had to figure out what our own standards were and this was a bit of a surprise for us. It wasn't something we thought about up front. Uh, but Morgan Stanley is a really big company. Uh, we have a lot of developers and we have a lot of different teams. Um, they all have their own ways of doing things and they all have their own styles. Um, you know, a lot of the work that we do on infrastructure libraries, there is no one good solution, right solution to this. There's a lot of different approaches that you could take. Um, and we had to think about how we worked and how we expected people to work. Um, you know, some of the questions that we were asking were, how, do, how good does good enough have to be? Um, does the change have to be perfect? Um, or is it good enough? Um, are we okay with an incomplete solution? Um, you know, when we write code for our own libraries, we're providing a generic solution. When our users come with a, with a piece of functionality they want to implement, they generally have a, have a specific use case in mind and they're looking to solve that use case. Uh, the answer for us was basically sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Uh, at a very general level, um, if it's a bug fix, we're probably not okay with an incomplete solution. Um, if it is a piece of new functionality, we probably will be, as long as there is a good understanding of how you go from where we are to the, the generic solution and it's in our backlog, so it can also be in a source. Um, how much test coverage is needed? Like I said, this code is not particularly easy to test. Um, you know, how much uh, do we push our users to provide complete test coverage for, for what they're doing, which is can be a more significant investment of time than the actual changes. So there's a lot of things here that we had to think about. Um, communication is extremely important. Probably the most depressing thing that happens to us is when uh, we suddenly see a pull request appear out of nowhere. Um, we have no idea uh, what the context for the changes uh, or why it's being done. Um, you know, we look at it and someone has clearly spent a lot of time thinking about this. They've invested time in, you know, in, in working on it uh, and it's not good. We're not going to accept it. Uh, and this is a really depressing thing to have to tell someone. Um, anytime there is any discussion uh, where it looks like someone may be interested in um, in contributing, we are very clear with them that you must discuss this with us up front. We have to sit down, we have to understand what it is you're doing, why you're doing it, um, and how you're going to do it. And if this is going to be a, a big change, we're going to want to see incremental uh, pull requests and we're going to want to work with you to make sure that it's going in the right direction and that you're doing um, something um, that um, makes sense within the, within the library framework. Just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should, as with everything in life. Um, there are a lot of uh, changes that we could be doing within our library, but we have an idea about what we expect um, the functionality within our libraries to be and what we don't want them to be. And we need to, um, you know, we need to set the, that understanding and communicate it out as well up front with our users. Um, 
dealing with deadline versus uh, quality is something that comes up quite a lot. Uh, our industry is, is very business focused uh, and people are looking to get things out of, uh, according to deadline. Uh, and we quite often hear uh, the same thing. Um, you know, we have this release going out in a couple of days. Uh, we don't care about anything else. We just need to get this change in and done. Um, and the answer uh, sometimes is uh, no, we're not interested. Uh, and sometimes it's okay, we'll work with you to make sure that this happens. In most cases, it's somewhere in between. Uh, but this tension between quality and, uh, and deadline can lead to some quite interesting conversations. Um, so was it worth the effort? Uh, yes, absolutely it was. Uh, we have expanded this out to our other libraries uh, and now all our repositories are open for, for contributions. Uh, and we have a fairly steady stream of contributions coming in. Um, it's, met our original goal uh, of keeping the code live uh, and maintained and, and changes going on. But it's also helped us build, build a, a group of really trusted collaborators. Um, we, are, we now have um, worked with teams um, to co-develop libraries uh, where we, we've collaborated really closely um, to build out a general purpose library uh, with these other teams. Um, you know, they are leading the development on this. They are involved very much in setting the direction and it's really a collaboration. Um, there's other cases where our users have seen a need for what they see as a general purpose library and we've agreed. And they've then gone away and developed that. And we've got involved at the end to help bring it into uh, bring it into our, our central uh, set of libraries. Uh, so it's been a very uh, successful approach for us. Um, it's not an easy approach though. It does take a lot of time uh, and it's taken a lot more uh, resources um, than we expected to make the, uh, the code um, really ready uh, and, uh, and to keep it going. Um, but that's also improved our own development experience. Um, you know, no one likes old proprietary build systems. Uh, no one likes uh, unstable tests. And it's really given us a reason to, to focus on this um, and improve it for our own, uh, our own uh, development as well. Um, it's also been very popular with our users. I was quite surprised when I first sent out the announcement taking, saying that we were going to take this approach, just how many people got back and said, this is great. I'm really looking forward to contributing and I'm really looking forward to having the opportunity to work with your team. Uh, so it's been very popular with a lot of our users. Um, we don't in a source everything. Um, all our repositories are open, but there's areas where we don't accept contributions. Uh, and this is really, um, areas uh, around security where there's other considerations that we, we have to take into account uh, or areas of code where there is particular complexity. Um, but overall, uh, we have a very steady set of contributions coming in. Uh, I wouldn't say we're overwhelmed with them, but it's fairly unusual that there isn't something going on. Uh, it's been a very successful approach uh, and one that we are uh, looking to, to continue. Uh, so thank you very much for, uh, for listening and uh, have a good day.